morning, everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Magnolias. Good morning. It's live with Amy. I am back, back in the uh, floral design counter area here at Magnolias in Nebraska, and I am happy to be here. Literally just rolled in 30 minutes ago from a delayed a delayed arrival. Jump on and say hi. Let me know if you're watching today. We're going to just do a little easy floral designing and chit chat about our trip that Kate and I took. She is going to stay home this morning. She drove me home and she's going to hang out with her husband and recover. But you've got me this morning. Hello, hello. So I'm jumping on for a little while this morning. I'm not going to probably do anything too strenuous. We just came back from the airport this morning as the crazy weather in our area delayed our arrival last night. So we were pretty late. Hi, everyone. Thanks for jumping on. Hello to Tammy. Hello, Julia. How are you? Thanks for joining me this morning. Hi, Judy. And Amelia, hello. Yes, we're here. <laughs> I don't even know what time it is where I left. Uh, they are seven hours ahead of us here. So yes, I guess I could figure it out. It's four in the afternoon to my friends still in the uh, in Europe over there in Holland. Hi, everybody. I know it's a wild day in Holland today. Today's King's Day. So we missed the party, but that's okay. <laughs> it looks like it's a little claustrophobic over there. Hi, Carol. How are you? Good morning, Brenda. Hi. I am uh, just back from the airport this morning. We stayed because we didn't actually get to land till eight o'clock last night. We were supposed to land at 4.55. We actually didn't get back to the airport till eight because of the weather in our area. And turns out there was actually tornadoes in Omaha last night. And the one that touched down at the edge of the airport touched down at 5.08 and we were supposed to land at 4.55. <laughs> so we instead landed at six over in Des Moines and came back to the airport at 8 o'clock and just stayed at an airport hotel. So this morning we drove back really early because um, we woke up early. Hi, everyone. Thanks for jumping on this morning. Hello, hello. Kate's going to stay home this morning with her husband. We just rolled in. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll do some easy designing this morning, feeling a little inspired by all the tulips we saw and all the beautiful garden flowers at Kokenhof. And you might be inspired too, right? Have you guys been watching? Looks like most of you probably have. I see some familiar names. And yes, Joanne, you're right. My team did an excellent job while we were gone. They were rock stars. Connie led the team and did a great job doing Facebook Lives in our place, which is not expected. It's not something we thought was going to happen, but she took the bull by the horns. And between her and Kayla and Laura and everyone, here and Natalie before she left, we got some great lives in. So now we know what they can do. Yeah, <laughs> they can do great things, can't they? So they were great. Thanks everybody for jumping on. Hey, good morning, Sharon. How are you? We had a crazy night. Yes, we were flying back from um, the, where'd we go? We went from Amsterdam to Detroit which was uneventful, and that was a great flight, but they had a lot of cold air blowing. You know how they circulate the air in the cabin, and I think I got a cold from that uh, seven-hour, eight-hour flight with the air blowing on me because I was freezing in the plane, but I was sleeping with my hood on <laughs> and my blankets over me. Yep, it was a great it was a great time. We loved it there, Nancy. I highly recommend it. If anybody has it on their bucket list to go over to see the Kuchenhof Gardens like we did, you should do it. You should do it. So we probably won't do it again, but it is going to be um, a great a great thing to do if in the future if you want to try. Oh, Sharon says she was in Elkhorn last night. So the tornadoes in Nebraska are a very serious thing. We still don't know the extent of the damage. But from what, if, if any of you haven't been following in Nebraska, it's very concerning. While we were in the air, we bought internet, you know, so we could keep up with everything. And the crazy things that were happening was there seems to be, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but as many as 50 tornadoes touching down in the state of Nebraska yesterday. And I think the one that hit the Omaha area and many towns are being mentioned, but they're all suburbs and linked to Omaha, so they were all around where we were flying into. Um, the damage over 50 homes probably easily in one neighborhood alone, and the destruction um, widespread and people we know. So 
we are thinking of them constantly today as they try to salvage their stuff. It's just entire neighborhoods wiped out. And we're very concerned about it here at Magnolias. We want to do something to help, so we'll be looking for a way to do something to help. It seems a little early right now to exactly figure out what we could do. If you would like to help us help people in the Omaha area that were affected and lost their homes in the tornado, stay tuned. We'll, we'll announce something. But what we see, I didn't see anything driving home this morning. We didn't want to go and be in anyone's way and, and gawk, you know. But what we saw was uh, online just terrible devastation in neighborhoods where people we know we live. It looks like Sharon was there last night. So I am concerned to hear the end results of the aftermath. It was a crazy night, and that was an E5 tornado, the first one in 11 years. Like the wind gusts might have been as high as 200, over 200 miles an hour, which is crazy. That's like worse than a hurricane, I think. I don't know a lot about hurricanes, but <laughs> I do know about tornadoes living in Nebraska. So jump on this morning, say hello. I'm just getting set up here to make a beautiful drop-in. We were touring Kokenhof Gardens. You know, I have to say it better every time I pronounce it. I'm trying to pronounce it correctly. Kokenhof. Kokenhof. <laughs> it's not Kokenhof. I know that. It's like Kokenhof. So we have had a very fun time. Actually touring the gardens, Kate went twice. Oh yes, here's my hat. Somebody just spotted my hat. This one is from the gardens. I got two. One's for my other daughter, Leah. Super cute, isn't it? There's tulips on my hat. I also bought tulip earrings with Delft painting on the beads, and Kate got Delft cats. <laughs> They're so cute. Little tiny porcelain Delft cat earrings. So this morning, uh, I thought I'd make something easy and figure out uh, how I can help restock the store. Looks like we're kind of wiped out online. Crazy amounts of stuff are gone. And Jane is still, uh, she's in Ireland today. So she's not here to design for another few days. She's gonna be in Ireland for a while. Some people are still in Amsterdam. We went earlier, so then we left right away, but others are still there. So that's pretty fun to be able to extend the day today and join the King's Day celebration in, in Amsterdam and any major city in Holland today. People are dressed up in orange and they're partying like Mardi Gras. And our friend Kathy, who uh, you all know from Hawaii, she's still there. Let me see if I can hold this picture up to the phone. She's still there and they're posting pictures as the day has gone on because it's afternoon. It's after four in the afternoon and she's showing this really crazy amount of people can you see that like a sea of people in Amsterdam with orange because that's the country of the, the color of the king's family and uh there's just drinking and parties and bands everywhere apparently so hi Gim, Gim, uh, Kim Gibney hello thank you yes we're glad to be home safe hello Brenda how are you we are doing okay this morning I don't seem to have been affected terribly badly by the time change. We woke up super early and uh, we got rolling before seven this morning. Uh, actually, we got out of the hotel before six or about six o'clock in this morning because that's the time zone is a little different. We're used, it feels later to us, but got a cold. So now I'm going to have to deal with the cold. I'm going to use some of these pretty little cherry blossoms while we were visiting the gardens and all over the countryside in Holland, all the blossoming trees were blooming. So many beautiful trees blooming. It was just amazing. We took a river cruise one day from Leerdam and that area is known for its fruit trees. So at this point, all the fruit trees are blooming there. The gardens had uh, focused on tulips at Kogenhof, but there were flower exhibitions and one of the flower exhibitions was of orchids. Did you guys see? What day did we do that? Uh, I have my tea. Thanks, Kim. Today I have chamomile mint tea, which is so tasty. Got some honey in it. This one is a gorgeous orchid. We were looking for orchids that were like the ones we have in our store. Some of the orchids we saw were ones we either had in the past or we know we can get them. This one, I didn't find an exact match to it, but there was some very similar ones. This is a beautiful one in our online store. And any of these stems I'm using today are also 15% off. This orchid is a Phalaenopsis orchid, and it is in a pinky color, kind of like a peachy pink. 
I love that color palette. So we love the orchid uh, garden area. It was an exhibition of different types of orchids loaded in one big building. And we did the live there on Friday, I think. Thursday. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. Yesterday was Friday. We must have done that Thursday before we left. So I was very inspired to see all those orchids. Fabulous, fabulous time. Um, we have a little jet lag. I don't know. I don't feel too jet lagged right now. Maybe it'll hit me later. We slept good last night at the hotel. It was quiet and I wanted to drive home. Kate was like, no, we're not doing that. She was done. She was over it. <laughs> that flight was the first flight to Detroit was great. The Detroit flight left on time. But like I said at the beginning of the video, we were um, supposed to land in Omaha at 4.55 and they diverted us to Des Moines, Iowa. And the tornado that actually touched down at the edge of Epley's um, runways happened at 5.08. What was my most surprising thing, the most surprising to you on the tour? Um, you know, I loved Holland. And actually, in Holland, the people there refer to themselves as living in the Netherlands. The Netherlands, they say, Netherlands. That seems to be how they speak about their area more than saying Holland. They say Netherlands. So we loved meeting Jennifer. I was not surprised when I met her because we've been chatting on Facebook uh, video and so forth. So I had already felt like I met her. But her family, we met her husband. And the people in that area are so friendly. And I love how everybody really speaks English. Jennifer says when they go to school at age nine, they start learning English. So everybody really could communicate with us easily and you didn't feel um, confused. <laughs> so that worked out really well. That was surprising. I didn't know it would be so easy to be able to uh, communicate with everybody. That was a nice surprise. And the country is super friendly, very beautiful. We drove around a lot in the countryside and we kind of stayed in a small country town and that was very fun. I loved it. Um, so we actually had stayed three, two nights or three nights in Amsterdam previous, and we were really enjoying the country. We were just talking about this morning, how we were enjoying the country town that we stayed in. It was so pretty. Uh, hi Ruth. Thank you for sharing. She said she's referring hanging baskets. We're referring us for hanging baskets. I've got to make some more now that I'm back. So this little design here that I'm just going to create is going to be a drop-in for sale. I will make more probably on Monday. I'm not going to stay too long today. I'm tired. i got to go figure out what I can do to help my daughter. She's My oldest daughter is going to take off and help her family in Omaha who actually live in North Omaha and had some damage on their property. And their neighbor's roof blew off their house and so forth. So we got to check on the kids. And we are going to be open today with a beautiful day here in Norfolk. I think it's going to be nice and sunny, it looks like. Maybe a little cloudy, but warm. It was so cold. It was so cold in Europe where we were. And it's raining today, it looks like. Maybe the sun came out for 10 minutes, but it's been raining every day. I think that's why I caught a cold. It eventually caught up with me. So I'm layering in all the tall stems first. We're going to use these pink cherry blossoms, these orchids, just a little inspo from my travels today because I like to design and I've missed designing and seeing all of you. Did you love the live videos? We had so much fun wandering around the gardens and the um, gardens were, it was misting and raining every day. So all the time there was little water droplets on the tulips and every photo Kate's got is going to turn out gorgeous. She'll edit and share them soon. Don't worry. You'll be bombarded with pictures soon. <laughs> so this looks good. Did you know we got all these new little poppies in? This I ordered right before I left. We got them in in three colors, four colors. It looks like, I don't know if you guys noticed that. And I'm, I didn't catch all the live designs days, but I had a little bit of it. I caught what the gals were doing. I ordered the poppy stems for kind of like a start to summer. We got the yellow in. We've got the red. This is a beautiful flame orange color here and the sprite yellow and then the yellow or the white one with the yellow center is really pretty in here. I love adding poppies to things. This little tiny dainty one is really sweet. Sweet little guy. Now I think I'm going to put some of these tulips in. Our foam tulips are we still have them in stock. We've been running out of tulips. 
of all the other types, but this style is still here, and they're kind of short, so we're going to have to sort of suspend them in this design to get them to show. Let's see how many I need. The live videos were kind of a trick to do in another country, but we did take along our microphone, so it worked out pretty well. And the second time we went to Kokenhof, what we did was went back to Amsterdam, and we went to the airport and took a... We had an airport hotel and we took a shuttle. There is a shuttle that runs six times an hour from the airport to the gardens 20 minutes away. So we jumped on that. It was super easy, inexpensive. Boogied on over to the gardens on our last day and spent the day there. Snacked, walked around, stayed out of the rain as best we could. And ate more apple pie. Oh my gosh, their apple pie there is so good. It's not even pie crust. It's like cake mostly apples in a cake. It's amazing. I could eat that every day. Now I got to get back on my strict diet. <laughs> That's what vacation's for. So Ruth, yes, Ruth is mentioning the tornado damage. If you would like to help, we are looking for what we can do. Um, we can always donate a, pro a portion of our proceeds from a segment of time here at the store, but I'm kind of wondering if I wait a minute, if there's just a GoFundMe or something, that will be very direct. So I'm going to just wait 24 to 48 hours and see what develops um, in the Omaha area for ways to assist. There's always disaster relief organizations, I'm sure, that are already accepting donations. And we're kind of waiting to hear from people we know what the best thing would be to do. Because um, I'm not sure yet. Not sure yet, but we'll let you know because we want to help too. There's a lot of viewers in the Omaha area. In fact, on the trip... Judy, um, mom is with us, and Doris Helfrick, and they're both from Omaha. And I know where um, Doris lives, and her area was outside of the tornado area, but I'm not sure where Judy's home is. It must be fine because no one has said anything on our chat group. Look at these yellow tulips. We're going to have to pull them up and wire them in there, but they look great with this orchid, don't they? Really pretty combo. I like it. So does anybody have any questions about what we were showing you in our live videos while we were in the gardens? Jump on and throw them at me if you do. I am game for questions today. I'll try to watch everything and see what you might like to know more about. We loved the, the gardens so much, and that was the point. You need a flower family cap, Debbie says. Hey, that's a good idea. The trick is finding a good ball cap. This one has a really long bill. I'm not sure I love that, but this is embroidered in super cute fabric. Love it. We'll have to check and see what we can find. There is, um, the gardens are open till May, like the middle of May, May 13th or something. And we were just talking today how they had all kinds of bulb flowers like hyacinths and crocus and tulips of course but there was no iris so I kind of think it might be because the iris bloom later in the summer and the gardens are actually not open that late so I think that's probably why they don't have any but I never thought to ask that do they start staggering the tulips yes they do we noticed in some of the photos we'll post you are um, going to see low cut off areas. They'll just go in because all the tulips are kind of planted in strips. And when the heads start opening up too much and dropping, they go in and cut them and tidy it all up. And you can see these cut strips, but it doesn't look bad because they do a great job of planting in stages. You can tell. Yeah. Oh, you have an arboretum in Minnesota. Oh, okay. I didn't know about that. Whereabouts in Minnesota is the arboretum? Um, there are naturalizing tulips that come up better in some areas. I bought some of those naturalizing tulips. Actually, they made a mixed collection of naturalized tulips with other blooms. I think there's hyacinths in it, and I ordered that mixed bulb set. So I'm excited about that. Oh, there's a tulip festival in Holland, Michigan. I bet so. Hmm. Do all the bulbs they plant come from Holland? I am sure they do. The growers are solid out there. I believe that is definitely, um, e they're either developing them in Holland or, you know, they're, maybe they're starting with a bulb from somewhere and making it their own because they're creating, constantly developing different hybrids. And some of the places you would go would have big advertisements about their brand and they might feature a new 
a new flower that they created. So that was part of the adverti brand advertising that you notice everywhere when you're walking around the gardens. They're labeling all of the growers with every display. So it's probably a very important thing that the grower is acknowledged. Whoops, these are too high. They got missed here. Hmm, I'm putting the full bunch of tulips in. Uh, it looks like a bunch of tulips on sale for about $20. And this design has all of them, but I have to get the wire higher because it's not catching these guys up there. Anybody else have more questions? Did I buy clothes? Yes, of course I did. <laughs> Amsterdam has some amazing shopping. Europe has some brands they don't have in the US that I've seen before. So I did go shopping at some of those brands that I like out there. And there are uh, too many people shopping, actually. Name this one Welcome Home. Good idea, Brenda. <laughs> Pella, Iowa. I went to that tulip festival one year in Pella. They don't have fields of tulips, though. They put them in their town, but they don't have any fields. Hey, I did buy some wooden shoes, Debbie. Kate's um, sorting through the suitcases because we had so much stuff. We um, crammed our stuff together wherever it fit and now we've got to sort our stuff. But I did bring back a couple of little um, wooden shoes that they made when they were demonstrating how they make wooden shoes. Like they make one really quick for the audience and they're wet. It's funny because they use fresh poplar wood and then they sell them for 250 euro and I bought a couple of them because they'll make cute floral designs. So I'll have to dig those out. Let's see, we have tulips. Um, they turn just open for tours. We're located in Norfolk County. Norfolk County, what state? I just missed that. Um, can I make up the green lace fern wreath with some succulents and greens or wildflowers? Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. Favorite foods. Um, let's see. This is looking good. Favorite food. We had bitter ballin, which are little uh, balls made of gravy and meat, and they coat them in a little crunchy breading and fry them in round balls. Those things were good. Got to try those. And then they make croquettes. The croquettes were awesome. And there's this chain called Febo, F-E-B-O, and that is like a chain store for, I suppose, just Holland. And you can go into their hot vending machines and buy croquettes. And this places are open really late. So just pull out, uh, you like put your card up and there's a whole bunch of little tiny cubbies and you can just open a door and pull out a tray of two fresh croquettes and, and buy them right there for a couple euro. And it is a tasty little treat. Because it's like meat and gravy together inside of a breaded little um, croquette. <laughs> it's the best thing I can think of. So I thought some child shoes, Facebook Marketplace a couple years ago. Yes, that's what I brought back is like child size wooden shoes that I was going to design. One for me and one for Kate. They'll be really cute. A cute memorabilia. I would bring back a whole bunch of wooden shoes and make designs in them, but that would be a lot of luggage. It's going to take up too much space. Our luggage was substantial. We're good shoppers, though. <laughs> we bought a lot of stroopwafel and a lot of candy. Um, we also had a really great meal, local meal, um, at several restaurants. You know, you just try the local feature or the daily special. And asparagus was in season. And the white asparagus that they were using was unbelievable. It was like huge beautiful, tender white asparagus, and we had amazing things. I had asparagus soup. I had asparagus ravioli. I had asparagus um, on the side. Just beautiful asparagus. Uh, somebody made asparagus flan, white asparagus flan. Um, and then I loved the candy. They had, um, I thought there'd be more chocolates. I don't think that was the part of the region where chocolates are as prominent, although they do roast the cocoa beans and get and create cocoa powder in sauce for the world, actually. That's a major production in part of Holland is extracting the cocoa from the cocoa beans and preparing it for chocolate makers. This thing is fighting with me in this cylinder vase, so we're going to go like this. 
it's not sitting nicely. Something needs to happen here. It was a fantastic trip. Our flight from uh, Des Moines to Omaha wasn't too bad. It was a small plane though, you know, just three seats uh, and two seats. It was like a CJ900 little aircraft, so we were bouncing around quite a bit, but it doesn't really bother me too much, so I was okay. There, what do we think of this one? This is cherry blossoms, white poppies, orchids, yellow tulips. Let's do this a little bit. I'm taking forever today. Yes, Jennifer, you're right. Hi, Jennifer. Chocolate's more in Belgium, but it was interesting to learn how the, in the Zons region of Holland, where they prep the chocolate beans for the chocolate that they make in Belgium. This is going to be fresh colors for late spring, early summer. I like it. I think what needs to happen is this tall fern is bugging me. I'm going to cut it off and drop it in lower. That'll make me feel better. Anyway, there we go. Oh, I know what else I really loved. Jennifer bought us all um, this pastry at the festival in her hometown. Kim is asking. It was called Ole Bolin. It was so good. Ole Bolin. It's kind of like a cream puff in that it has custard in it is the traditional filling, but they make all different kinds of fillings. But the pastry wasn't mm, bitter, wasn't baking soda flavored like a um, cream puff. It had a more of like a dough base to it. That was great. That was being made at a stand in the during the festival. And everybody got one. We all tried it. It was amazing. And that was called Ole Bolin. <laughs> so this little guy, we're going to call it the Welcome Home Drop-In. Good idea, whoever threw that out there. I forgot. This one is going to be called the Welcome Home Drop-In. I kind of started adding it up. Let me double check what I have for a total over here. And I can make more on Monday. Not today, probably. I'm going to not stay all day today. I'm sure I'll get tired at some point here but it's got orchids and poppies and let me add this back in where's my calculator here and see where we're at it was a good trip yes my my favorite part of the trip was getting to meet Jennifer uh, loved meeting you Jennifer and your really nice husband and our we had dinner together and she got to spend a day touring with us this one is 118. 118 for the welcome home drop in. <laughs> cemetery arrangements sound good. Amy's asking for cemetery arrangements. That's a very good idea for the vases and saddles. I have something new I'll show you for a vase idea. 118 for the welcome home drop in. Let me measure it. We have to put the measurements online. I'm kind of slowly designing today. Slowly, slowly. Yeah, go at home with my tea and my favorite blanket. I think I'll be doing laundry and checking on my granddaughters and trying to help how I can with them so that mom and dad can go help people in Omaha. This is 24 inches tall and about 13, 14 inches wide. We'll go 24 by 14. I kind of flared out the stems because when you stick it in a straight up and down cylinder, that helps it stand upright and it doesn't it's more stable when you do that so 24 tall 14 wide I can make more and then it will come up at 15 percent off of 118 Ooh, good question Brenda cheese oh my gosh our luggage is full of cheese we brought back Jennifer I don't think you were with us when we bought that cheese we were at the Zans de Chance uh, tour, we went to the Henry Willis cheese factory and we bought all these little rounds. You know what was amazing? They had asparagus cheese, they had cumin cheese, um, thyme, cheese with thyme, but mostly it's their different ages of Gouda. Oh yeah, apple tart too. Uh, but what they say there is it's not pronounced Gouda or Gouda, it's Hoda. So I learned that all these years I've been saying it wrong Gouda cheese is actually Hauda cheese. <laughs> 
So that is uh, amazing how young cheese tastes different than older cheese, which is stronger. They have cow huda, they have sheep, they have goats, they have everything, all the different types of milk making the cheese, and then they put the flavors in it. They even had um, goat cheese that was lavender flavored. They had coconut cow's milk cheese, which is actually amazing, and love that. That was unusual. Um, they have the cheese shops where they have tiny little samples, and you run around with your toothpick, and you try like 40 kinds of cheese. It is very fun, very fun. And then Kate bought all their little mustards. She was loving the mustard that goes with it and had a great time. So, yes, we're going to have a little party over here one of these days with our staff <laughs> and get the cheese out so they can try it. We brought back a whole bunch. My mom will like that, too. Yes, very fun. Did they have bone deuce cheese with caraway seed? Uh, they did at breakfast. I didn't see it to buy, but every morning at breakfast, Donna, at our hotel, which was an amazing hotel, they had that full spread of breakfast, and I grabbed like a homemade roll that was really crusty, and I put some sliced meat, some scrambled eggs, and that cheese with caraway seeds, and then and they have little packets of pasteurized Gouda cheese, so it's like spreadable Gouda. You can put that on your bun. Mm, that was so good. I could eat that every day, but... Now I have to get back to my real world diet, which should not be breakfast like that every day. <laughs> and you know what else I loved? The cappuccino machines. The cappuccino machines were outstanding. I need one because you can get cappuccino in the machine all frothy and foamy at, in an instant. We stayed in Schagen, which is S-C-H-A-G-E-N, Schagen. I can't even say it right, Schagen. It is north of Amsterdam, like an hour outside of town. It's a town the size of ours, but it is clearly a vacation area. And they have uh, amazing restaurants. Like that town is tiny, but it's full of really good restaurants. So that was a blast. I love that because the restaurants there were outstanding. Compared to the size of the town, it was just really surprising how many nice restaurants they had and a beautiful church that we could tour and walking around. We missed the shops because we were taking tours every day. I didn't get to the shops. Some of the other gals did, but beautiful. And we had great dinner at a restaurant right by our hotel with Jennifer and her husband. The beach was at a town. Oh, Jennifer, what was the name of the town? Jennifer just posted the name of the town and the hotel, the Markstead Hotel. And what was the name of the town where we went to the beach? It starts with an, a C. Uh, we had this wild idea because, you know, we realized Jennifer lives about 15, 20 miles from the beach, uh, kilometers, whatever that is in miles, maybe 20 minutes to the beach. And we didn't go the day we were in her area. And everybody's like, if we're so close to the beach, we want to go. Well, nobody's thinking about the time of the year and how crazy windy, obviously, it always is at the beach. So then we talked and people said, oh, there's a really nice restaurant at the beach. Well, yes, we want to go there. So we lined up this little excursion at the end of our day, uh, spur of the moment, to go to the beach. And it was, oh, there we go. The beach was in Castricum. And that was a great experience, except for it was windy and freezing cold and the surf was crazy. But it was such a cute restaurant. Oh, my gosh. With a wood fire, um, a big round wood fire in the middle of the restaurant. So it was very cozy in there and amazing food. And you had to walk down to the beach to eat, which was a significant distance. I can't believe they have business like that. Around here, restaurants wouldn't even be open with that kind of beach access where you have to walk so far in the winter. But people were going. There was people there. And there was even people... Um, I forgot to tell you this, Jennifer, when we were eating, their two ladies went into the freezing surf, topless, and come out right by the restaurant. And somebody at the table is just like, oh my God, she's topless. They were obviously doing some kind of birthday dip or something because they ran in and they ran out. That was so funny. Let's put some gladiolas in a big vase arrangement with these orchids. That'll be a good idea. Let's try. We might need three gladiolas. Uh, we'll do three iris. We'll do two pink cherry blossoms. These are the big cherry blossoms. Look how large these are. All these stems are 15% off, by the way. 
And if you love beautiful stems, we realized we have some very realistic ones. When you go see the real thing, there's a lot of our stems that really pull great realism. And we are going to try really hard when we go shopping this summer to do an excellent job of finding the most realistic bulb type stems or garden stems that we can. Just based on having more experience now from seeing them firsthand, especially for Kate, because I've been in the fresh flower world for many years and have a lot of experience with fresh flowers, but she hasn't. Like me, I did fresh for years before I had my own company. So when uh, she got to see the real ones, she was pretty excited about that because she doesn't get to see that. Okay, I think I got all this stuff scanned. We'll figure out how much this one is at the end. There we go. And we're going to drop down this little cherry blossom a little bit shorter. I love the iris here. This is the last of the iris. We don't have any more left. I mean, this is the last color. I don't have any other colors. And there's a few lavender ones, not a bunch, but there's a few still. So that's good. We'll use some in here because it's still spring. Very springy weather. Looks like everybody's had cold and rainy temps too around the country and today there still could be storms. I am not sure we're out of the woods in our area. I hope nothing else happens today. This is enough for Nebraska. Well, like I said at the beginning of the live, we're going to look for ways to help um, those affected in the Omaha area. Whether someone puts together a GoFundMe or we have a uh, link that we can provide if you want to help donate. I know a lot of our customers are from that area. They come up here and visit us. We don't know without digging really hard who lives in what areas, but I've already heard this morning of a couple people that I know whose homes were destroyed. And there's probably more. In fact, I have a good friend who owns a business in Elkhorn. I don't know if the business district was hit or not. I haven't seen anything posted from them, but their business is right in the center of Elkhorn, so I'm not sure how they're doing. We're going to put this together with some cherry blossoms and some ferns. I love this maidenhair fern stem. It's one of the best fillers for these drop-ins. I'm absolutely going to need to keep this stuff around. I better watch my inventory. Natalie's asking what happened. Just search on Facebook, Nebraska Tornadoes. There was apparently um, in 11 years they haven't had an E5 tornado, and that one was on the ground a mile wide from the Lincoln, western, eastern Lincoln area to north of Omaha. It made this huge swath of devastation that has destroyed a lot of homes. Somebody was saying like 30 to 40 in one neighborhood, but if you're talking about all the homes that were destroyed, I bet there's a few hundred. Just kind of looking at the photos, the big neighborhoods that got hit, and I don't know that anyone was fatally injured. They're not saying yet, so I hope that is not the case. I hope that's not the case. Wow. So you'll have to just check it out online. There's tons of videos up. We were watching them while we were on the plane and trying to understand the neighborhoods and the places where we know we have family. In fact, I haven't checked on my family. I asked my dad about his sister because she lives in Gretna, <clears throat> and he didn't say anything, so she must be fine. My cousin lives there. Yeah, there's a lot of people we know that live in that area, and if they're not personally affected, I bet they have friends and family that were. So this is going to be a very tall arrangement. I'm designing it in my 20-inch clear glass vase. That needs to be clean. It's a little bit dirty, but we're going to make this arrangement here. I think I need three maidenhair ferns, three gladiolas, and these drop-ins are simple for me so I can get warmed up again. I haven't been designing for a long time. This is the first day in like 10 days. That's a long time for me. <laughs> Isn't that weird? I'm always here. To be gone so long was a treat, so I do appreciate our staff covering so we could go. It was really a nice break to get up every day and do something different and have that change of scenery and meet our friends who came from all over to join us on the tour. It was super fun. We had, um, we tried to interview them in one of the videos. So if you jump back, 
and you missed it, you can go back and watch a video on our VIP page is where that might be. So if you're not a member of Magnolia's VIP, ask to join. And then I think that's where she posted the video where we're interviewing all the people that went with us to ask what their favorite thing was about the tour. And that is where you'll find the video that Kate created, I'm pretty sure, on the Magnolia's VIP. It's a private page, so it's nice to put the more personal things there rather than expose them to the huge population out in regular Facebook. I think this could benefit from yellow. Hmm. I don't think we want orange in here, but what about the yellow color? That's a maybe. It's starting to look a little Eastery though. What else can I put in to jazz it up? Maybe I put some hot pink in instead of yellow. Hey, Kayla. Hello. There's Kayla arriving this morning. You guys had a wild day yesterday, didn't you? They closed the store early, which was very smart that you got home in time. Hi, Josie's here too. Good. Kate stayed home. Just me today. The hot pink looks good. Let's use that little ranunculus in there. I like that. And where's the rest of them? This is probably not going to be an inexpensive drop-in because it's really big. This is so pretty. Isn't that cute? Oh, let's see. 40 to 50 houses in Minden, Twyla says. Oh, in western Nebraska. I know where Minden is. Yes, way out west. Oh, goodness. I'm sure we're going to have terrible reports of all this um, devastation as the day and the next week goes on. Let's put some of these in. I think we're going to need three stems of the ranunculus. Very fun. One, two, three. So these drop-ins that I'm making today, I can make copies of them if you want one. I'll recap the first one. I'm probably only going to get two done today, actually, since I'm being so slow. Oh, Minden, Iowa. Orange is the color of the day because of King's Day. This is true. Jennifer, you are right. We should make an orange arrangement, shouldn't we? Hmm. That's fun. A fun idea. So this one's going to have hot pink, lavender, um, cherry blossoms, gladiolas, and maidenhair fern with these beautiful iris. Let's drop those all in there. Get it all wired together, and it'll have to be arranged because we need to stagger all these stems a little bit, all based on the huge, tall um, cherry blossom for starters there. Maybe it needs a more solid stem tucked in. What would this one do? Oh yeah, that looks nice. Let's put one of these in. This is a really big... I think it's called a euphorbia. Let's check and see. Euphorbia, perhaps? Variegated euphorbia, yes. This stem is a great filler. It's on sale. Or no, it isn't. It's $15.50. It's not a flower. The flowers are on sale. Everything else in here is on sale. Got it. And this can go right in the center. Look how many pieces it has. So it's a good centerpiece for this to help make it look fuller. So I'm just kind of chatting and designing today. If you dropped in late, I was taking any Q&A questions for our trip to Amsterdam. Kate will be back with me on Monday. We'll get back into the swing of things. She was tired this morning and she wanted to hang out with her husband. We literally had, we should have been back last night, but we just came in this morning. So this is me coming straight from the airport with a hat on. How do you feel about that? We got up at 6, 5.30, 6 a.m. and headed out this morning to get home. And then we got a flat, a low tire. So we had to go fill her tire up. Somewhere on the highway we hit something and now she has to have her tire worked on. <laughs> We've had a morning already. Quite a morning. We don't need any more drama. We just need to be home, I think. Uh, let's see the travel company information. I think I just missed your comment about travel company. We did tag them in a couple of our posts. If you want to look back, uh, we used rocket getaways to organize the big trip. And then we used, um, 
a company called Zons Tours, which is a local tour group. And that one is the local group that took us around to the regional um, in our little bus every day with our own travel uh, guide and our own bus. It was great. It worked out perfectly. And I think that you could use them too. We're probably going to have to make a post so that people can find them easily. Kate will need to do that and get them tagged properly. But I know she tagged them in a couple of our posts earlier. Yes, everyone. Robin's making a comment. Please pray for Iowa and Nebraska. I don't understand as much about what happened in Iowa, but we did drive into and fly into Nebraska last night. And uh, the area that has been hit with the tornadoes is right where the airport is. So we didn't see anything because we didn't go get in the way anywhere. But I know it's all around North Omaha where a lot of our friends and followers are watching from. So I'm sure there's people we know, all of us here probably know someone in that area who's been affected. So this design is going to take some shaping. It's all the little garden flowers. We were so inspired by the gardens and all the fun walking tours of the gardens at Kokenhof. Loved it. Kokenhof Gardens was outstanding. It's worth all the hype. And they do have a Facebook page, so you can check them out. But our videos were pretty extensive walking around. If you watch our video posts from Thursday, we were in an orchid exhibition. And then we walked outside for a long time. And I think we had jumped on earlier in the week on Tuesday, perhaps. I kind of lost track of what day it was. And it's, they're way ahead of us over there in Holland. So it is afternoon, late afternoon there. So this looks really good. Let me see if I can add it up and get you a total. I need a uh, calculator of which it has gone missing. No calculator. No calculator. Okay, no calculator means I gotta jump out of this video and do something else here to get you a total because this is not adding it up correctly. Anyway, this drop-in, I'm gonna be able to recreate it if you would like one, and I'll get you a price. Anybody have a name for this one? This is gonna be, it's gonna be needing a name, and it's going to be repeatable on Monday. I can make more, but I'll make more of anything on Monday if you don't mind. And these stems are all on sale, so when this goes uh, is billed to you. If you want one, you can just take a screenshot or t type in the title. We will sell it to you at 15% off. This is not coming out correctly. I'm not adding right here. What is happening? So we did use three white gladiolus stems, three ranunculus stems, three iris stems, and two maidenhair fern stems as well as two cherry blossom stems. So that means the total is going to be with labor. If you want one, it's going to be 181 uh, and then 15% off on that one as well. 181 cherry, cherry, cherry blossom drop in. Hey, that's a good one. I like it. That's clever. Thank you, Nancy. Cherry, cherry blossom. It's bright with that little extra pink in it. And 15% off is gonna make it 153. And it's a very big drop in. This is gonna get some bendy vine wrapped around the bottom of it too. We gotta do the bendy vine, don't we? Lest we forget one of the most important things I always love to use this brown twig vine. We just call it bendy vine. That isn't really what it is, but that's what I call it. <laughs> and this one is... No, I think I got all my green stems in there. We put those ferns in there too. So we're just going to cut off a couple of these little pieces and use it to wrap around. I had scanned the euphorbia, so it is in there. That is the variegated leaf, the euphorbia. So this will be on sale for about $1.53. And if you want one, we will have this one to sell and I'll make more. You can just email the store or send us a Facebook message. That's easy to do too. I'll show you the other one that I designed. I only made two. 
And then at your request, yes, I will be getting back into the designing business here. We're going to do more cemetery pieces. That's high on the list. I see we do not have many wreaths for front doors. We don't have very many centerpieces. We, we just need everything, right? And the ranunculus is the hot pink ranunculus. There's only one that looks like this ranunculus. And you can always search in the online store with keywords too. And just type in a keyword and it will show you all of the ranunculus, for instance, if you type in that word or just start typing it. Well, Marilissa, thank you for that comment. <laughs> we rested last night in Omaha instead of driving home because when we finally landed at 8, and we were supposed to land at 5, um, it felt like 2 a.m. in Amsterdam, so we'd been traveling for about 22 hours. Where we'd been up for 22 hours, getting to the airport, waiting to get our flight. You know, you don't mess around in Amsterdam. That was kind of a big airport. Didn't want to be late. Oh, wow. Look at that. The iris really stand out in there, don't they? So this one on sale for 153 If you would like one, we decided we're going to call it the Cherry Cherry Blossom Drop-In. And if you want one, I'll make them on Monday. Connie will send you an invoice. You can send us a Facebook message. This drop-in is very tall. Let me measure it quick. Um, you could cut it down if you want to. I'm putting it in my vase that is 20 inches tall. And we do sell this clear glass cylinder that's 20 inches tall, but the total height of the design with the top gladiola is 42 inches tall. And it'll flare out at about 17. So 42 inches tall and 17 wide. You can cut it shorter. All these stems, just use the side cutters, trim them off if you need to. And it's just a big, tall, showy thing. In fact, it would actually possibly fit in someone's floor vase. If you have a vase that stands on the floor, this could be very showy in that as well. And then the other one I made earlier is much smaller. Here's the comparison and much pinker. This one is called the Welcome Home Drop-In. It was 118 so the sale price is, uh, use my math, the sale price is going to be $100. And this one is super cute with the orchids, the white poppies, the darker pink cherry blossoms. This is just a little different style of a cherry blossom. And this one has a touch of yellow. We use the tulips, you know, inspired by the tulips. We're showing it in this vase that's uh, $26.50. It's kind of a natural pottery vase. And that is in the online store available too. You've got choices. This vase itself, if you want to use one at home, this is a nine, eight and a half inch tall, nearly nine inch tall vase. So if you have one at home that's similar, it would probably fit in there for you. And if either, if you don't mind, I'll make these on Monday. If you want one, just message the store and you can give them the title of it or a screenshot. This again is the Cherry Cherry Blossom Drop-In. And uh, the big one is, and the little one is the Welcome Home Drop-In. So that is what I tried to do today. Let's just make a little bit of stuff so that our store isn't empty. And that kind of has been what's happening. No one's been here designing. So thanks for your patience while we get back into the swing of things. Jane will be back next week later in the week. She's not coming back right away. Uh, they've been, they've gone to Ireland. So that's exciting. I'm, I'm anxious to hear about that. I'd like to go to Ireland too. And I, Pearl, you're the second person who said, could I make a hat? With UV protection, I guess that would be all about the hat, wouldn't it? That would need to be a big hat. <laughs> that would be a brimmed hat. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Well, maybe we need to make a gardening hat. Probably. That's what I should look for. The bad weather last night was here. I did not get home in time to see it, thankfully. But yes, the weather in Norfolk was bad as well. No tornadoes here, but it was very ominous looking. My son-in-law sent pictures. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I am going to have a short day today, but I didn't want to miss checking in with you. We've been gone so long, and I know you've been waiting for us to get back. I am happy to be back. It's always good to be home. Good to travel, but good to be home. And thanks to our friend Jennifer. We had an amazing flower family field trip to Amsterdam, the Netherlands, all around Holland. So excited. Thank you, Jennifer, for being such an excellent hostess. She did a live with us even one day, too. You're a great sport. 
just put you on the camera and away she went. She was on it. <laughs> so that's that was very fun to do. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. I will be back on Monday. Find me live here at noon. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.